Hi, welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths. We are going to take a look at a practice um, task for the trigonometry internal. This one's about penguins and fish, so we've got a predator and prey situation. Um, as the predators increase, the prey would go down and vice versa. So let's start by sketching what we think this is going to look like for the penguins and the fish. So we've got penguins, um, they start at 600, have a maximum 2.25 months after the study begins. Um, that maximum reaches 830, it peaks every nine months with a minimum of 370. So let's pop that over at the side here. So the penguins, We've got this study that goes on for a year. Um, let's pop that um, 600 is where it's going to start. We're going to get a maximum of, so this is 12 months here. Um, so we've got about six there, two would be there, and so on. So our maximum 2.25 uh, goes up to about 830. So that just there would be 830. And it peaks every nine months. So nine months after 2.25 will be 11.25. So around about here. Um, and then the minimum will happen halfway between those two and go to 370. So something like this, and it started at 600. Moving on to the fish, we've got a peak of 900 at one month. Um, then it peaks every four months after that goes to a minimum of 100. So at one month we've got a peak of 900, like so. And I'll say fish is in pink. Um, and then four months after that, so at five months we've got another peak of 900 um, and a minimum of 100 halfway between them. And then that pattern will continue. So something like this. That's a pretty terrible sketch up from um, my side of drawing things, but it's just to get an idea of what this is going to look like. Now we can take a look at this first bullet point, which is to write equations for each of the penguin and fish population. We have to use sine and cosine, so we need to give um, both the possible equations we could use for those um, curves. All right, so let's start with the penguins. And taking a look at the amplitude, um, so that's our horizontal um, distance from our median middle line up to the top or the bottom. So we've got 830 minus 370 over 2. Then think about the period and frequency. So frequency is 2 pi divided by the period of our curve. And the period is how long it takes to repeat, so that's 9 months um, between peaks. So that's 2 pi divided by 9. Then we have the horizontal shift, which will be different whether we're considering sine or cos. Now just taking a look at the penguin's curve, the cos one will be the one easiest to think about, I reckon, because uh, we've got that peak there. We can easily think about what shift that is. That happened at 2.25. So for the cos curve, we've got a minus 2.25 shift. Let me think about what the shift would be for the sine version of this function. Um, and actually what I didn't spot before was that 600 is perfectly between um, 830 and 370. So it is actually starting down at that median line, the middle between um, your top and bottom of the curve. So for the sine curve, we don't need any shift at all it would have a horizontal shift of zero. Finally, we've got the vertical shift, which if I'd done this one first, I would have spotted that um, 600 was in the middle because we do this with 830 uh, plus 370 divided by two gives us 600. So we have that vertical shift up and that 600 is our middle line. Okay, so writing that properly, we've got y equals these two equations. Now we're going to pop over to Desmos and check that those equations give us what we want. All right, so here's the cos one and here's the sine one and you can see they nicely match up. Now let's just double check a few things. It starts at 600 
reaches a maximum at 2.25 and it's at 8.30 and then we get that minimum at 3.70 we have a maximum again um, at 11.25 okay so everything's working perfectly there we'll go and do the fish one and in the interest of time I've just paused the video and finished that working through for the fish there and we'll go pop that into Desmos now so here's the cos one and here is the sine one and we'll just check um, that it's doing all the things we think it should. So at one month it peaks at 900, at three months it dips to 100, it repeats again every four months. So that's working just as we were expecting to. Okay, so I'll just keep one of those um, and pop on one for the penguins. So now we have the penguins and the fish on the same graph and we can do some more stuff with them. Right, so the next part, during what time intervals are the po fish population at risk? So let's go see what was needed there. So fish are considered at risk when their population is below 350. So we come back to Desmos and we put in y equals 350. Um, now our fish curve was the um, green one. Um, so we're looking for everywhere that the green goes below that 350 line. So we've got a point here, here, and so on, like this. So putting that into a sentence, we've got the fish are at risk, and that means that they're below 350 between those months that we saw here. So we've got the first one is 2.245, up until 3.755. So putting them all down looks like this. Um, it's those times during the year of this study. This would also continue every uh, four months because we know that pattern repeats. OK, let's go back and see what's next. So if this model applies over an extended period, find the times when the number of fish is at serious risk. So serious risk is when the penguin's population is greater than 500 and the penguin's population is above the fish population. So we'll go over to Desmos and put those in. So we've got penguins more than 500. So we'll swap out that um, y equals 350 for a 500. So we're looking for where the penguins are above 500 and more than the fish. So the penguins is the red one here. So we start off at the beginning there at our zero. That is above 500 and more than the fish up to the second one there. Then they go above again just here. And we're just marking off all the points where they are, they are above 500 and also more than fish within this um, time period. I'll click that last one even though it's outside of the 12. Which actually brings us to thinking about when we're putting these two together, how frequently does this combined pattern repeat? So the penguins, we know that they were repeating um, every four months and the fish was every nine months or was it the other way around. So fish was every four months, penguins every nine. Um, so combining those two together, the lowest common multiple of four and nine is that these will repeat every 36 months. So we actually have to go as far as 36 months on our axis. It's going to be a bit of a mission getting all of them in, but we've got Desmos to help us. So we can go through, click all of those places that um, it goes above um, the fish and above 500. So I'm just going to pause and put all of that together. So this is me writing that up. And now I'm going to go and get the values off of the graphs for when that happens and put them into this form. That was very tedious, but we've got them all now. Um, all of these include the 36N, uh, so we know that that can repeat every 36 months, um, with the exception of the very first one. That was because the first one was sort of cut off by it starting at zero months, uh, but you can see the last one. Um, covers that same pattern that you would have seen just over here. Um, so that last section of what I wrote down here tells us that um, it will repeat again after that every 36 months. Our very final thing is to write down a couple of um, limitations about how this has been applied. So here you've got a little bit of discussion about assumptions and limitations. I'll just allow you to pause the video and read them through because I think I have rabbited on for long enough.